Let us look up to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, today we come into your throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help us in times of need. Recognizing and appreciating the fact that you are a great high priest, we come with gratitudes and appreciations and myriads of thanksgiving for the tokens of your goodness, your blessings, your favor, the myriad blessings, mighty God, that you have bestowed upon our lives from January until now, mighty God, even as we get ready to cross over into a new year. We are cognizant of the blessings, mighty God, the grace bestowed upon us, the blessings of your divine protection, the blessings of your mercy, the blessings of the work of our hands, our families, mighty God, marriages, in the name of Jesus Christ. You that said you uphold all things by the word of your power, sustaining all things in Jesus' name, by your word. We honor you and give you praise, and you are the one that became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, the glory of the Holy Begotten, of the Father, full of grace and full of truth, mighty God. We worship you and honor you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, mighty God, that unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And today we recognize your government over our lives, over our families, over our children, over the nations, over the city, over this land. In the name of Jesus Christ, that all nations and all creation will bow at your presence. Because your name is exalted above every name. Because of the supreme sacrifice. A price that you paid on the cross of Calvary for our redemption. And today we bring glad tidings of peace and joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we release your peace over everyone. Anyone that is going through difficult times or challenges. Even in the midst of the Christmas festivities. I've come to release light unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the land of Naphtali, the land of Zebulun, the city that sat in darkness, I've seen a great light. And those that were under the banner of the shadow of death, light has come. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. May the peace of God overwhelm your life. May the peace of God saturate your life. Any trouble, any sorrow, light has come today. And he said, arise and shine for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the midst of the gloom. In the midst of the doom. The Assyrians overtook Israel. Especially on Judah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Subjugate them and made them subservient. By the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah declared. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Isaiah chapter 9 mighty God. Light has come. And those that sit in darkness shall see light. Let that be your experience this morning. In Jesus name. That all things will work together for the good of them that love him and them that are called according to his purpose. And who he, he who did not spare his son, but gave him up freely unto us. How much will he not freely give us all things in the name of Jesus Christ? And if God be for us, who can be against us? I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that no force in darkness of might God will stand at hands against the people of God. For we are more than conquerors through Christ who love us. And thanks be to God who give us the victory always in Jesus' name. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we have come to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That even as a child, the three wise men came bowing before him and releasing gifts of incense and myrrh and all kinds of things, frankincense unto him in Jesus' name. He's the one that we worship and let this government be upon our lives to govern every area and facet of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I just want to give a simple charge because I know we have Christmas and we have to go home and do all kinds of festivities and all kinds of things. But please be reminded that in Jesus' name that the birth of Christ is what gives us the impetus in the name of Jesus Christ to live this life. Christ eternal brought us eternal life. And in him we move and live and have our beings in the name of Jesus Christ. Never be, be, be afraid or never lose the fact that God is in the midst of his people. Emmanuel, God is with us. He has come and he's in the midst of us already. And this is the technology that he gave to us. That he told, he conceived and took it upon himself. Entered the womb of a woman by name Mary, a virgin. In the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of God came to dwell inside of him. And he said, you shall conceive and give birth. To a child and his name shall be called Emmanuel, God is with us. And that same spirit is inside of you. And if you are healed yourself and avail yourself to the spirit of God that dwells inside of you, you'll be a manifestation, the brightness of his glory. 
and the person of God in Jesus' name. That you reveal and manifest the Christ because the Spirit of God always draws inside of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And that's why the Bible said this is the mystery. Christ in us, the hope of glory. He's inside of you by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. And it is your responsibility and my responsibility to avail ourselves to him. So that we can manifest the Christ. The excellence of his glory in every area and facet of our lives in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I just want us to look at the simple scripture in the name of Jesus Christ. The title of my message is Sacrificial Love. Sacrificial Love. Hallelujah. Saturate me with your anointing. Saturate me with your presence. I want to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate me, O oh God, today. Saturate me with your anointing. Saturate me with your presence. Oh, my Lord, I want to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate me, O oh God, today. Be lifted high above all of our gods. We lay a crown and worship you. Oh, glorious God, we praise your name. We lay a crown and worship you. Awesome God, how great thou art. You are God, mighty are your miracles. I stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship you. Awesome God, awesome God, worship Him today. How great the Lord. You are God, mighty are your miracles. I stand in awe of your holy name. Oh, as we bow and worship. Jesus, we enthrone you as we proclaim you are king. Standing here in the midst of us, and we raise you higher with our prayer as we worship. As we were, she filled the strong. As we were, she filled your throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. Hands up, eyes open wide as we cry. We lift your name on high. We lift your name on high. Hands up, hearts open wide as we cry. We lift your name on high. We lift your name on high. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. We lift your name on high. We lift your name on high. Let every other name fade away. 
Jesus, take your place. We lift your name on high. We lift your name on high. Lines up, hearts open wide as we cry. We lift your name on high. We lift your name on high. Let every other name fade away. Let every knee bow. Let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. And this is the name that he has highly exalted in Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. That God has highly exalted him. And given him the name that is the power of every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let every situation, let every stronghold, let every power, let every force bow to the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let sicknesses, let diseases, let yokes, let burdens and everything that represents oppression bow to the name of Jesus. Kalatis, salatos, kalaparantes, dali tukuparazias, mulata tukutas, Pray in the spirit for some few minutes. Give your spirit a charge. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you in this place. Don't be dry. Some of you have been dry for a while. This is a time to charge your spirit, man. And this is the spirit that helps in our weakness. In the name of Jesus Christ, that even when we don't know what we ought to pray, that the spirit itself makes us intercessors for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. We give you praise and bless your holy name forever. Lord, in thy presence, there is healing divine. Restore us, O Father. We bless your name, O I, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. In this place, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Breathe upon us the fresh breath of your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, fill us up one more time with your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. As many as desire, as many as test for your spirit, let them be filled this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. You that breathed upon your disciples and said, receive the spirit. And they came, mighty God, in Jesus' name. We give you praise. Saying that the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And we all with faces unveiled have come to behold your glory as in the mirror. That we are being transformed in the same image of your son from glory to glory just as by the spirit. We give you praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us take a look at Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1 to 7. In the name of Jesus Christ, the title of my message is Sacrificial Love. In the name of Jesus Christ, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 to 7, in Jesus' name, and John 3, 16, which is the very popular verse. But let us read the word of the Lord together. The Bible said, nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed. So no gloom will be upon your situation in the name of Jesus Christ. That in the midst of the distress, you will experience the peace of God that surpasses all understanding in Jesus' name. As when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, and afterwards more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. 
and those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light a sign. You have multiplied the nations and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest. Let that be your experience. As men rejoice when they divide the spoil, for you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressors in the day of Midian. For every warrior sandal from the noisy battles and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel for fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no hand. And upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forevermore. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. And indeed it has been done and it is established already. And Christ Emmanuel is with us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Give him praise. We welcome everyone into the house of the Lord. Uh, please help me welcome a sister-in-law and her husband, Mr. Wilson, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also want to welcome our brother Nate. I think that's Nate, yeah. And then our sister Martha, right? Yeah, we welcome you into the house of the Lord in Jesus' name. God bless everyone for joining us in Jesus' name. I want to talk about sacrificial love in Jesus' name. The scripture that we just read, and I don't want to go into all the exegesis of it because we have little time left in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm not trying to go over the time because I'm, I'm aware and cognizant of the fact that we have to go and celebrate Christmas, especially tomorrow in Jesus' name. But I just want to give us a charge so that we can understand the supreme sacrifice and, the, and the, the reason the birth of Christ is superior and unique in Jesus' name is because of the sacrifice that God did. In that he reconciled us unto himself by establishing peace, making peace with us. Because prior to that, we were in bondage and captivity and we have been separated from death. And separated unto death in Jesus' name, gradually perishing in the name of Jesus Christ. But the God gave unto us a child. He, he, he gave a, a son gave unto us a son. A child was born, but he gave unto us a son. And this is very important even in our Christian experience that we don't remain children in the name of Jesus Christ forever. Children cannot receive inheritance. It is only sons that have been groomed and well-cultured and well-matured in the faith that are entrusted with inheritance. So he came as a child, but he did not remain as a child. He became a son, and it was a son that was given unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. And therefore, the Bible said in John chapter 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And it is possible that right now you are sitting here and you have not even given your life to Jesus Christ. Let the birth of the Christ be a reason why you will give yourself unto him in the name of Jesus Christ. And your life will never be the same. We are dealing with the kingdom, the Bible, and the government shall be on his shoulders. And Christ, the king of kings and the lord of lords, is the one who is the supreme leader. The king of all kings and all governments. It doesn't matter what nation you are in. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And the world and they that dwell in it. But God is bringing us to a place of sonship. And sonship requires that we understand and have a better understanding of what it takes for the government of the king to be upon our lives. A lot of people have received Jesus Christ as their Lord. But then he's not their king and he's not even their Lord. He's only their savior. But it's the time we move from saviorship into kingship and sonship. And because if we are going to receive the inheritance of the Lord, we have to allow the government of the king of kings to be fully manifest in our lives. And in the government, there's power, there's glory, there's wisdom, there's favor, there's blessings, there's riches, there's peace, there's joy, there's gladness, there's glad tidings. Everything that you need is in the kingdom. But it's only going to be received if we yield in total submission and total surrender to the government of the king of kings and the lord of lords whose throne is in heaven and it's no ordinary throne i'm not talking about the throne of queen elizabeth or whoever this is the throne that is seated in heaven forever and ever and no power in existence can even come close do you understand what i'm saying the 24 elders cast their crowns and worship him in the name of jesus christ and say holy 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 lord god almighty 
You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about a throne that you can just carry. Like you go to a fetish priest and have some throne sitting over there and you can literally put it on your back. This is a throne that cannot be removed. This is a throne that stands forever. Do you understand? This is a throne of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is the throne of the one who draws an unapproachable light that no eyes can see or can even come close. Do you understand what I'm saying? I came to make sure that you have an orientation about the government so that you can allow the government to rule over your life. Do you understand? But in order for the government to rule over your life, you must first of all give yourself to him just as he gave himself to us. A lot of people are playing games and they don't want to give their lives to Christ because what we present, the value proposition that we present, is not convincing, convincing and persuasive enough. But I came to introduce you to a kingdom that a kingdom that has every provision that you need. A kingdom that has your joy, your peace. A kingdom that if you submit to your marriage will be peace and joy. A kingdom that you submit to you will be healed and delivered. A kingdom when you submit to you have divine protection. The protection of men with guns. Supernatural protection. Do you understand what I'm saying? That God is calling us just as the son came and he gave himself to us because of God's love for us to reconcile us back to the father. God is reconciling you and I to the father. And because of Adam's treason, and you must always remember what happened in the garden of Eden, that Satan came through subtlety and took a voice and deceived Eve. Do you understand? And because we are all part of that race, we all fell. And God cast us out of his presence into a place. And that's where we saw all kinds of corruption. In the beginning, there was not even a lion or a dog that can attack a person. Abraham was the one that named everyone. Adam was the one that named all the animals from chimpanzee to cobra to whatever. Do you understand? But because of corruption, animals can kill. Dogs can even kill. Because of everything. Creation is corrupted. But there's a second Adam that came took the womb of a woman, wrapped himself in the womb of a woman because of his love for you and I. Do you understand? Mary, starting from Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Do you understand? And the angel appeared and gave Mary a charge that you will conceive and bear child and his name shall be called Emmanuel and will bring salvation to the whole world, not to you and I, to the whole world. So today there's a clarion call. If you are making playing games with Christ, your life will never be the same until you submit to the lordship and to the government of the king of kings. Do you understand? It doesn't matter what your philosophy, what your persuasion is. There's no king, there's no power in existence that is greater than the throne that is watching over you. There's no force in existence. There's no shrine, there's no principality, no power in existence that can stand against the king of kings and the lord of lords. But it's only going to, that you have that confidence and that boldness of character if you submit yourself to the king of kings and allow the government to overwhelm you in character, in purity, in holiness, in attitude, in temperance, in purity, in blessings, in in honor, in favor, everything will be blessed Amen. if you submit yourself to the king of kings and the lord of lords. Amen. A lot of people are playing games. They don't want to submit themselves to the king of kings and the lord of lords. And their lives is just a life of being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and philosophies of men and systems of the world. There is a culture of the kingdom that you must be aware of. If you are from in the United States, there is a culture do you understand? The food is different. Everything is different. The clothes we wear is different. Do you understand? But in the kingdom, so it is. In the kingdom, there's a culture of the kingdom. And we must submit to the beatitudes of the kingdom. The character of the kingdom. And love is the greatest of all in the kingdom. Now abide faith, hope, love. These three. And the greatest of all is love. But I'm not talking about the love. Because it's very important that I define the love that I'm talking about. Because a lot of people are, have been introduced to a certain type of love. Are you hearing me, somebody? And that love pales in comparison to the love that Christ introduced to us. The love that Christ introduced to us is unconditional. The love that Christ introduced to you and I is a selfless love. It's a love of self-denial. A love that does not expect any repayment or return when you help somebody. It is a love that even when you don't want him, he keeps on pressing his say, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I was the one that cut your umbilical cord when you were lying down in the wilderness about to die. I took you and I made you. Do you understand? If we are going to see the manifestation of the power of the kingdom, and our lives will become a sign and a wonder. We need to yield the total submission to the government of the king. If we are going to see peaceful marriages, if we are going to see marriages that represent the church and the Christ, as Paul the apostle said, it is required of us to yield the total submission to the government of the kingdom. 
And so today I came to tell you, if you are being tossed to and fro and you don't want to submit to the kingdom, today as we celebrate the Christ, the birth of the Christ, this is the day that you must examine your heart. And I trust by the Spirit of God that there will be a deep conviction in your heart that that part of your heart that you have placed idols in and you have one foot in and one foot out, that you begin to put your whole foot in. You understand what I'm saying? You will never see the power of God. You will never see the majesty of God. You will never see the glory of God in your life if you don't submit in total submission and total surrender to the government of the kingdom. And Christ is our example of what it takes to live the kingdom life. Because Christ, in Hebrew chapter 1, that God who in diverse times and diverse ways spoke to us by the prophets has in the last days spoken to us by his son. The son who is the brightness of his glory. The express image of his person. Upholding all things by the word of his power. Do you understand? In the kingdom we have a different constitution. Just as the United States have a different constitution. In the kingdom there's a different constitution. And that constitution that has been given to you and I is the Bible. Amen. The word of the Lord will not die. Kings will pass away. Principalities and all kinds of things that we are running away from, witches and wizards, and all things that we are running away from, although we're not supposed to run away from, everything will fade away. You understand? But the word of God shall stand forever because His word is forever settled in the heavens. So, in the kingdom, it is your responsibility and my responsibility to obey the constitution of the kingdom. And that constitution of the kingdom is the Bible. Are you hearing me, somebody? And one of the proofs that you are maturing in the kingdom and you have yielded and submitted to the lordship of the kingdom is love. And it's very important that when you read your Bible, you examine scriptures critically. Do you understand? When God talks about love in the Greek, in the ancient Greek, there are four different types of love. I'm sure, I don't know if you know that or not. Because there's love which is eros. That the Greek call eros. That is love that comes through sexual intimacy and affection for one another. Are you hearing me, somebody? But I'm not even talking about that love. And even that love is reserved for married couples. Although the world is so corrupted that even men and men are doing the same things. And they calling themselves, they love each other. You love what? That is not the character of the kingdom. Do not be deceived. Amen. I was listening to something very sad. That the people are not going to a church called the United Methodist, Methodist Church because they don't support uh, gay and lesbian and all these kind of things. But that is not even my topic for today. You must understand and read, study the constitution of the kingdom. Do you understand? Anyone that is a lover of the world will be an enemy to the Christ. Make no mistake. Anyone that loves the world will be an enemy to the Christ. Do you understand? I'm not saying you should not have fun. The Bible said the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the spirit. So one of the proofs that the government of the king is over your life is that you experience his peace and joy. Peace that will overwhelm you. You understand? You don't need anybody to stand in your side to play music to make you happy. I don't need that. Do you understand? I love to be by myself and seek the king of kings and the lord of laws. And I'm happy with that. If you see me laughing, you think I'm going crazy. But you don't know what I'm experiencing. Make no mistake. That doesn't mean I, don't ha I shouldn't have a wife. I'm married. You understand? But there's a greater joy and there's a greater love. You understand? Greater than your husband, greater than your wife, greater than even your children. And the person who is able to give you that love is called the king of kings and the lord of laws. So you must understand what love we are talking about. There's love, eros. In the Greek, and there is the stogi. The stogi is the love that a, a, a father has for his children or even a, 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 a family relationship. Like you love your brother, you love your sister. Do you understand? And there's also the phileo, which is the brotherly love. But there's a greater love, which is above all these love. It's called the agape love. And that is what I came to introduce you to. And that agape love is love that is sacrificial. Love that requires self-denial. Love that requires you to seek the interests of others even better than yourself. And I came to charge you to a higher love. A higher form of love. Do you understand? Love in the name of Jesus Christ. And in the Bible, Paul the apostle begin to give us an exorcist of what love is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you have to understand that it doesn't matter how much you give to the poor. It doesn't matter how much you give to orphans. It doesn't matter even if you lay your life for somebody. If it was not done out of love, it, proves, it means nothing. 
So in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, let us look at, because I want to give you a charge so that you can understand that love I'm talking about, that agape love. Do you understand? It's a love that has certain characteristics, and it's a love that tells you what to do and what not to do. Do you understand? So the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have no love. I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could not I could remove mountains, but I have no love, I am nothing. Yeah. So please be careful. Don't let your giftings and uh, let your anointing deceive you. If any preaching or anything that is not that out of love, it will mount to nothing. Yeah. The kingdom of God is a kingdom that God gave himself to us. That is where God is introducing you and I to. Even in marriage, that is where he's introducing you and I to. Are you hearing me, somebody? A love that is pure, a love that is kind, a love that is long-suffering and patient, a love that is not rude. Let us take a look at scriptures because I don't want to rush into it so that you can ask that in your head and in your heart so that when you are talking about love, you are not looking only at emotions and affection and all that kind of stuff and intimacy, which is all very important. But God is bringing you and I to a greater form of love. Do you understand? And said, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but I have no love, it profits, me, it profits me nothing. Now, this is what love is. And you see that there are two things that love is, and you see about eight or nine things that love is not. And this is the accurate attributes of love. This is the, what, anytime you are talking about love, it must express all these things. Do you understand? And he said, love suffers long and is kind. So you cannot say that you love a person when you cannot endure anything and do things for them. Do you understand? Love that suffers long is love that is patient. It is love that is enduring. That even in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the person hurting you, in the midst of all things, you are long-suffering because that is what the one that is long-suffering, that is what he died for us for. Love is kind, which means that the kind of love that does not have any action in place, that love is an action word. The love that requires you to show acts of kindness to your neighbor and to your brother. And now I hope you know that the Bible said the whole law and the prophets is summed up in one. Love your neighbor as yourself and love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind and with all your spirit and your soul. So you cannot say that you love a brother if you are not kind. So if there are all kinds of envy, jealousy, backbiting, and all kinds of things towards a brother, perhaps maybe you are, you are exhibiting that in your heart. But you have to know that there's a one who has an x-ray. There's a superior x-ray from heaven that can x-ray your heart. That even what men cannot see, that x-ray can see. And it's a God who is omnipresent. He can see all things. So you cannot say that you are expressing love and there's no kind acts towards it. Love is kind. So that's why I'm saying that God is calling you and I to a higher level of love. It has nothing to do with emotions, although emotion has a part to play. It has nothing to do with sexual attachment, although that has a role to play. Do you understand? But it's a superior level of love. It is a love that does not envy. So if you are sitting here envying your brother, a sister, or maybe even your family member, perhaps because they've risen and they are doing well and you are envious of them, you are not exhibiting love. If you see a brother doing well and you hate that he falls so that something goes wrong, you are not exhibiting love. Do you understand? If your husband is doing well and you are not happy, and I must say that, you are not exhibiting love. Do you understand? Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Which means that love that does not parade itself is love that is not arrogant. Which means that it doesn't matter what resources you have. You know that you cannot parade yourself because parading yourself is, is a sign of pride and arrogance. And therefore, if you are exhibiting love, you must act as if you are less and think more of the person than yourself. Amen. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. So excuse me with all the things that you have and claim that you have love. That has nothing, mean nothing to God. Your titles, your philosophy, your education, and all those things, it doesn't matter to God. Do you understand? So be very careful that you are not deceived. Maybe you have a big break, and right now you are parading yourself and making a, dishonoring people and disrespecting people and thinking that you have love. If you are a believer, that is not love. Do you understand? Love, it does not parade itself. Love does not behave rudely. How many times have you been rude to one another? How many times have you been rude to the, the hotel clerk? How many times have you been rude to the janitor? How many times have you been rude to that person sitting on the street because he wants to, is asking for $2? Do 
How many times? If you are doing that and you are very rude, you are not showing those acts of kindness, that good manners. You are not show, express, expressing love. You understand? A person even spill water on your shoe, you act like you are crazy. You have even forgotten that you are a Christian. That you are $200 shoe. They are the, he- goals of he- the streets of heaven are made of gold. You understand? Have you not read in your Bible in Job chapter 22, it said the Almighty shall be your gold and your precious silver. He is the one that you need. The reason why we are not experiencing the blessings of the Lord is because we don't love him. If you truly love him, you will experience his blessings. You understand? The reason why we are not seeing, that is why I'm going to take you through a road journey, a, a road map of how Abraham entered into the blessings, where he became a channel of blessing out of obedience. And not only that, he built altars. You must have an altar. He, he had the covenant with God. You must have a covenant. He walked in obedience, following instructions until he came into the promise. And you must have, be aware that while you are on a journey with God, it's a journey of faith. He does not show you everything that you need to know. If he shows you everything, then faith will not be required. Until you get to the promised land. You understand? It doesn't matter what situation you are in, how you feel. Don't let your pain be the reason why people will say you are not acting out of love. Don't let your anger and that your rude behavior make people think that you are not even a Christian. So at work, be very careful. In your marriage, be very careful. Be, make sure that you are exhibiting acts of kindness and, 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 and acts of um, generosity to one another. Mutual respect, honoring one another. Do you understand? There's a lot of people that dishonor men of God even in their homes. And they say, I haven't done that. And when some curse come upon you, you come and say that, I have not done anything. You did. Have you not read in your Bible how a woman by name Michael, when David the king was dancing like crazy? And before the act of his presence. And then he said, oh, how would a king behave this way? How would a king with such dignity behave this way? And God shut her womb forever. You understand? So be very careful how you speak. Don't be speaking to the other people in your room. And when you see them, you say, oh, how are you doing? God bless you, my brother. And you come and kneel and bow. Kneel and bow what? You have dishonored the person in your room. And the Bible said, even the best will take it and go tell the king. You understand? The Bible said love does not seek its own, which means that that love is selfless. It does not seek its own. And this is a greater charge for you and I. It does not seek its own. He seeks the best of others. So in your marriage, we must all have, we all have a responsibility. We all have a charge to make sure we seek the best of one another. Do you understand? It, it, it's a responsibility. It requires discipline. It requires effort. Do you understand? Even if you don't like it, you must act out. It's an action and a word in motion. And we have to be very careful that how we define love. Do you understand? In the world today, love is only emotions and sensationalism and sexual attraction and everything. You cannot have sex when you are 85 unless you are like maybe Adam or something. So you're, not, you're going to need more than sexual attraction. That body that is wrinkled, what kind of attraction? You understand? So it's greater love. And it cannot only be sexual attraction. What if your wife is pregnant and loaded with a baby? Are you, what kind of sex are you going to have? It's only kids that follow after those little things. I don't, I, my husband did not buy me a car. He did not buy me a gift for Christmas. There, there is no, no Christmas in the Bible. You understand? There's no Christmas in the Bible. So if you are thinking about Christmas, it was made by men to handle the Christ. So don't let little, little things. Your man has been a very good person. You know, he is doing everything. He is providing for your household, taking care of the home, doing all kinds of things that even traditionally they're not supposed to be doing. You know? <laughs> and you still don't handle them. You are disrespecting them and telling them to do more. You understand? The women are cooking all kinds of cookies for you. All kinds of food. Like this Christmas, they're going to be doing all kinds of food. All kinds of food that you have been craving for. They will be cooking all of these, stand, out, stand on their feet for four hours and everything. Honey, move the trust. I can't do it. Why don't you do it? I'm watching TV. You want to come and eat? Why don't you go eat the TV? 
You understand? So please, be very careful. Love does not seek his own. You will seek the best interest of one another. And if you always have that heart, and we all have work to do, no one is perfect. You understand? But it's love that perfects all things. We have a charge. It is a responsibility. It will require discipline. It will, it will cause you to do things that you don't like to do. You understand? But you must do it. It does not seek its own. And it's not provoked. You cannot be provoked. Anything you are hungry, anything your husband tells you you are hungry, even if go get me a water to just drink, you are hungry. You are provoked. That is not love. Love is not provoked. And it thinks no evil. So if you are thinking evil of a brother, not even you, I mean, you should not be thinking evil of your husband. Why are you married to somebody you are thinking evil of anyway? But it, this is a greater call. It said you, it, you should not think no evil. So don't be thinking evil of your brother and your sister for whatever reason. And I uh, see when the, love, the Bible says love does not envy. You should know why he's saying that. Do you know that there were two brothers by name Cain and Abel? And sometimes people say he's my brother, he's my sister. Do you know what is in their heart? I've seen brothers fight and not, don't even talk. Let money come and let inheritance. I'll tell you. Even here, we are dealing with the same thing. People will become like animals, your own brother, because of a car or a house. So don't think that because they love you. You will know they love you in your difficult times. You understand? Some families are not talking to each other just because of property. Love, it, and they even wish you die. But no one is going to die. Anyone that has that pit for us, they will fall into it themselves. You understand? People consulting all kinds of powers and thinking that they have the upper hand. They don't know that God that we are talking about, he's long-suffering. Are you hearing me, somebody? The reason why when people get away with evil for a long time is because God is long-suffering. And he's watching them, hoping that they will come to a place of repentance. Do you understand? And if it does not come to a place of repentance, there's something, the only thing left is judgment and wrath and vengeance on them. You understand? There is a cup of his wrath. When God comes as a jealous and ang angry, uh, a jealous and a God of vengeance, you run away. Read your Bible. That's why people don't like reading the Old Testament because God was killing people left and right. Yeah. If you touch Moses, the earth will open up and swallow you up. Yeah, you understand? Simple. So don't think that people that are doing evil, they will get away. Watch history. Anyone that did evil did not get away. And if you get away, it will come to your children and your children's children. You understand? Love does not rejoice in iniquity. So don't say that you have love when you are always sinning and you are happy sinning. Iniquity is gross transgression. Sinning every day. Don't say that you have love. If you have love for Christ, you will not rejoice in iniquity. Somebody went to steal something, you are happy. Somebody even went to steal something and sold it to you, you are happy. Love, it does not rejoice in iniquity. Do you understand? It does not rejoice in iniquity. So anyone that says that they love you and they're always, and it does not rejoice, it only rejoices in the truth. So anyone that says they love you and they're always telling lies to you, watch it. That is not love. Every day you are lying. Even a cup of water to uh, somebody is coming at your door, you are lying about that. Everything you lie. Love. It does, not, it does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. You understand? So don't let somebody be a, a one who become a compulsive liar and deceiving you and lying to you every day and they claim that they love you. Oh, honey, I love you, I love you. That is not love. You understand? Cheating left and right. And center, you have become public toilet. There's a friend that told me that when I, 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 used, to, <laughs> I used to work at the place, at the way we come together, we used to laugh. Uh, every, uh, you have become public toilet, which means that everybody comes to enter. That's what you, anything you see, you enter. That's how public toilet is. You just see and you walk in there and you enter. You, some of them, you don't even have to pay money. At least in Europe, you will pay $2 or something. Love bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endure all things. So you, 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 should be, you should make room to be able to bear certain things, knowing that I am not perfect, you are not perfect. You understand? It's very important. The people that have been married for long, for many, many years, and you see them holding hands, they can barely walk, and they're doing this. They, they have a wisdom that they live by. You understand? 
You see them holding hands at 50, uh, married for 50 years and they are still holding hands and they can barely walk. And even when they can, their hand does not even work, they are holding their wife's bag. There's a wisdom that they have. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. There's a certain level of endurance that you must have. I'm not saying that you should tolerate any foolishness. That's not what I'm saying. But you must make room for certain things. No, there are certain things that the person that God gave you, God never created any perfect person. At least before Abraham, Adam. So when Adam was corrupted, everything was corrupted. So don't be looking for a perfect, I'm looking for, I'm waiting for that, that uh, good man or that good woman. You'll be waiting for 100 years. You will not find it. There is no perfect man or woman on earth. Everybody is a work in progress. When you submit to the Christ and to the Lordship and yield yourself to him, then you are transformed and you are changed and you become like him as he is. So don't be looking for any perfect, if you marry, marry somebody, say, I'm looking for, I'm waiting for Mr. Right. There's no right person anywhere. Mr. Right, where? There's no Mr. Right or Mr. W uh, woman anywhere. You got to work at it. It's responsibility. It requires endurance. You bear all things. Do you understand? And then this is another thin aspect of love. Love never fails. So don't say that uh, I'm being married for 25 years. I don't love my wife anymore. Love, it never fails. That is why God is calling us to a higher form of love. Love that never fails. Love that is unconditional. Love that is solid, rooted. Love that is pure. Do you understand? Love that is enduring. That it doesn't matter what it is. You are able to, by reason of that love, you still go after the person. And you must see the character of the Christ. That even when he was wounded, even when he was bruised, even when he was chastised, he still showed his love to us. That is the higher level of love. It's called agape love. Sacrificial love. A love what you will be forced to deny your interest and the things that you like to accommodate the other person, whether it's a brother or sister. Love never fails. So don't, and you must always also be praying because some people, they think that, uh, you know, people have been married for 30 years and they still divorce. Even people married for, there, there's even a story I heard. A man has been married for many, many years. I don't know how long. And then he met his wife for a pancake because the wife didn't bring pancake or something. I know that guy. I don't know whether he was deranged or something or some spirit came upon him. Or maybe he has been harboring ang anger for many, many years. Because you see, if you don't know how to heal your wounds, eh, and you harbor anger for a long time, you will end up becoming a medra. Trust me. That is why you must always set your heart. That some people think that they, they have a pure heart. If we, able, if we come to circumcise your heart and dissect your heart and break, break it open, we all run away, even including me. You understand? There is a scripture. The Bible says, the heart is deceitful among all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So the prayer that you must be praying, creating me a pure heart. Because of my relationship with you, I put aside everything that will come defile me. Any envy, any jealousy, anything that will come to defile me, I put it aside. It will not enter my heart. My heart is an altar. Amen. Where there is communication between divinity and humanity. Humanity. Love never fails. So don't be, if you are thinking about divorce, go re-examine your marriage and how you fell in love anyway. Because if you fell in love in the wrong way, go back. If you fell in love because of sexual relationship and everything, you, are, you have already missed the mind. Go and God is calling you to a higher level of love. It is a love that is selfless. Love that is devoted. Love that is even when it's rejected, it keeps on giving. Love that gives and does not expect anything back. Do you understand? I'm not saying one person should be given and you are not given it because you, they are so human. Even angels rebel in heaven and came down here on earth. That's why you have Satan. And we are all running away because of Satan. I, be, I break, I break, I destroy. It's because of that. So even angels, they rebelled against God. So I'm not saying that you should tolerate anything, but you must have an open heart to endure certain things. You understand? Don't let the enemy whisper to you and give you wrong counsel. A lot of people have been divorced because of wrong counsel. Somebody told them leave. And they, didn't, they were Christians. They didn't examine the word of the Lord concerning that matter. And they divorced. And their life has never been the same. Because you have to understand that two are better than one. The Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. Let me make him a helper. You understand? Unless you want to become like Paul the Apostle, you become a celibate or something. There is an anointing to become an eunuch. So if you need that anointing, me, I know I don't have it. So... <laughs> 
if you want to become a eunuch forever, then that's good. Me, me, my members are always working. They yeah, want me to, to be alone, I mean, to not have a woman. No, 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 no. My, my wife is here. Mm -hmm. My members are working. The, the, the genes that was in my father is still, is still in me. My father, you know how old I was when my father gave birth to me. If I tell you, you run away. Agile, strong. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When my father said he was 70 something, I was like in primary school. So do the math. You do understand? Yeah, so love never fails. It never fails. It does not envy. So don't, have, don't envy your brother. Don't envy your sister because they are doing well and or because you know, they are blessed. As a matter of fact, the blessings of the Lord will cause people to envy you, but don't be part of that group of people that are envying somebody. We have a culture where anytime somebody is doing well and have money, everybody is jealous of them. They want you to give them all their money and they become broke. You borrow money from credit card, have you paid? You are sitting here praying for supernatural provision. If it was your money, would you ask for the money to be canceled? Well, the wrong side of prosperity. I'm not saying God cannot do that. God, God can cancel debt because it is, it is a year of jubilee debt are canceled. Do you understand? I'm just giving you something to, to think about. You went and used your credit card that you, don't, you, you did not work for to buy all the Gucci's in the world. Every day, every week you are shopping. If we give you a, a storage house, you fill everything with everything. And then you owe in debt 15 times. You know, I, I usually pay attention to the debt that Americans owe. If credit card debt, all of them is money that they don't have. They owe money, and then when it comes to paying, they, they want something to happen, especially Christian. May the Lord cancel it. Ask yourself, if it was your money, do you want it to be canceled? You understand? So we, we have to be very careful that as we go today, we must etch this in our mind, etch this in our heart, that love does not envy, love does not provoke, love is self, long suffering, love is kind. Do you understand? And also you must also know that one of the fruit of the Spirit is love. And if the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you and I, we will exhibit love. Love in the, in the Hebrew is charity. If the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you, you will exhibit love. Do you know that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, when it gives the list of, of the fruits of the Spirit, the things that are attributes and character of the Spirit, if you are walking by the Spirit and led, led by the Spirit and you are maturing in the Spirit, there are certain fruits you must bear. One of them is love. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. And we'll end here. Uh, yeah, the, uh, my time is uh, up. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. And now the fruit of the Spirit is love. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. What? Joy. Peace. Are you, do you see that it has long suffering there? Do you see that it has love there? Do you see that it has kindness there? It has goodness there. So if you are bearing the fruits of the Spirit, if you are walking by the Spirit, you should be exhibiting love, kindness, joy, peace. Faithfulness, you should be exhibiting all of these in Jesus' name. So please, as we go, be reminded of God's love for us, that there is a superior level of love that God is challenging you and I to walk in. It is called agape love, sacrificial love, selfless love. Love that requires self-denial. Go think about it, etch it in your head, put it like a band around your neck, write it on your wall, recite it until it becomes you. In Jesus' name, give him the praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah.